My best friend in those days was none other than Crazy Eddie Muldoon. Mm. Crazy Eddie was very bright for his age. <laughs> he was always coming up with great new adventures for us. Once when we were about eight or nine years old, Eddie came up with the idea of building an airplane. One that we could actually pilot around over the countryside. Now, of course, I didn't want to have anything to do with such nonsense. But you've got to understand, Eddie had this rather uh, enthusiastic way of presenting his visions. Pat, 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 come here, come here, come here. Look what I drew. Look, 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 look. It's an airplane. We're going to fly like eagles. <laughs> Eddie, that's a nice drawing, but I hardly think we're going to. Of course we're going to fly. I designed it myself. Eddie, let me see that. <laughs> Don't you think it needs a motor or an engine or <laughs> something to get it off the ground? You don't understand. Look again, it's a glider. <laughs> We're going to build it up on top of the barn roof, see? <laughs> And then we're going to roar down the steep slope of that roof until we get up enough speed to glide right on up into the air. Eddie, you have come up with some of the dumbest, weirdest ideas I've ever heard of. But this one here, this one here, is fantastic. <laughs> I just hope I don't get air sick. Don't worry, Pat, you won't get air sick. Eddie was right. <laughs> we immediately went to Mr. Muldoon's workshop to once again borrow his toolbox, which he had hidden. <laughs> under some old boards, a few gunny sacks, and a bale of hay. <laughs> Mr. Muldoon was probably worried about burglars breaking in and stealing his tools. The technology used in building this plane was much too complicated for the layman to understand, so I'll only mention here that its basic construction consisted of two peach crates for cockpits, a 12-foot plank for wings, <laughs> half a dozen two-by-fours for structural strength, a tail made from cedar shakes, and about 600 nails. <laughs> Most of them bent. Eddie's radio flyer wagon, now you remember those, the real ones, served as the undercarriage to the plane, which the young aeronautical engineer calculated would provide sufficient momentum down the steep slope of that barn roof, and then you see, the wagon would simply drop away <laughs> once we had achieved takeoff velocity. <laughs> The plane aimed downward was tied by its tail to a sturdy iron weather vane on the peak of the barn roof and jerking on the free end of a large bow knot would release the craft to the forces of gravity and send it plummeting on its maiden flight. For which Eddie and I now eagerly prepared. Still as Eddie studied the finished plane, he seemed mildly concerned. Pat, Pat, I think we're going to have to have a test flight on this one. And guess what? You get to be the test pilot. <laughs> won't that be fun? No, Eddie, it won't. It's too dangerous, Eddie. I may be dumb, but I am not that dumb. <laughs> if you want, though, I'll go along as co-pilot. <laughs> All right. I'll be the pilot. You can be in charge of jerking the bow knot. Okay, come on, get behind me. Oh, oh, you know what? I bet my folks would really like to see us take off. Why don't you run and go get them while I check out the controls? I didn't recall that the plane had any controls. <laughs> but I scrambled down the long, steep pitch of the barn roof and then down that long, tall ladder all the way to the ground and I ran all the way to the house. Mr. and Mrs. Muldoon were there. Mrs. Muldoon, we just built us an airplane. And we're about ready to fly it and we were... And Mrs. Muldoon smiled at me. 
And she said, of course they'd like to see our plane. They'd be right out. Oh, that's great. Uh, you got to come out behind the barn to get a good look at it. <laughs> You're really going to get a kick out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Muldoon, stop me. <sighs> and said that he hoped we hadn't been playing around his tractor because that could be dangerous. <laughs> no, Sir Eddie said we didn't need a motor or an engine. So we left your tractor alone this time. <laughs> I then raced back to join Eddie, who was already seated in the front cockpit. I climbed into the rear one, my knees up around my chin, and I grabbed hold of that release rope with both hands. The plane strained at its tether. <laughs> Pilot to co-pilot. Pilot to co-pilot, when I yell contact, you yell Roger and then you give that rope a hard jerk. Oh, get ready, here come Mon Pa now. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Muldoon came around a corner of the barn, both of them smiling expectantly. <laughs> Boys said they built themselves an airplane, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how they did that without any tools. <laughs> so where do you suppose they put their run away? <laughs> it's up here, Pa, on top of the barn roof. <laughs> the Muldoons looked up. <gasps> we looked down. <laughs> Just from the expressions on their tiny faces, <laughs> I could tell they were astonished that a couple of little kids like me and Eddie could build such a fine plane. <laughs> Mr. Muldoon remained speechless, but Mrs. Muldoon sagged against her husband. <laughs> and then she cried out. No question about it. <laughs> she was delighted with our aircraft. <laughs> I had the presence of mind to return her jaunty salute. Mrs. Muldoon! Mrs. Muldoon! And then, pilot to co-pilot. Contact! I jerked that rope. Raj! with a great clatter of wagon wheels on wooden shingles. <laughs> that plane hurtled down the barn roof, the wind whipping a hair, the edge of the roof and the ground zooming up at us, Mr. and Mrs. Muldoon screaming bloody murder. And then suddenly, at the last possible moment, light as a bird, that plane... Yeah. <laughs> Lifted off. And it soared higher and higher, and it glided up into the skies on the air currents of glorious summer. And it floated out over pastures and wood lots and the thin green meandering line that was Sand Creek. And down below all the tiny cows and horses gazed up at us in astonishment and admiration. <laughs> it was all so wonderful, just like Crazy Eddie had told me it would. <laughs> Except he had forgotten to mention <laughs> How much it would hurt <laughs> when I opened my eyes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Mrs. Muldoon was crying and hugging Eddie. <laughs> Mr. Muldoon was bending over me, saying he thought I just had the wind knocked out of me <laughs> because he couldn't see any broken bones sticking out of my skin anywhere. <laughs> or any vital organs lying amidst the wreckage of our planet. <laughs> or any blood gushing up into the air. <laughs> but I did feel a bit gooey. We had crashed into the manure pile. <laughs> that was what had saved us. <laughs> A big stinking pile of manure. In later life, I might have attached some symbolism to that. But as an eight-year-old, I merely found it to be a stroke of great good fortune. <laughs> <laughs>